name's Emma, I'm from Happy Tat and I'm making recycled fabric uh, flower fascinators and headpieces. My name is Mandy Shaw and I'm here at Glastonbury Green Crafields and teaching people to um, make bunting on vintage sewing machines, so they're called camp bunting. My name is Harriet Riddle and I am a textile performance artist. I um, travel with my sewing machine and I stitch in unusual places. My name's Fish and uh, at the festival I run a drum making workshop where I get people to make their own drum. Hi, I'm Noe. Um, I'm a felter. I've been felting for 11 years. Right. My name's Emma Fountain and I'm a felt maker and I specialise in needle felting sculpture, mainly animals. I started doing it, I went to a craft camp uh, years and years ago when, when my child was little and I learnt felt making there and then eventually I just started sculpting with it and um, I got published in a, a national magazine and all of a sudden I was doing it full time. They will be making sort of horns and uh, animal ears and they can make wet flowers and pictures and all sorts of little bits and pieces, little animals and you know it's, it's aimed at every age. Craft is really, for me, it's really important um, because it, it gives you um, a sense of creation. It gives you delayed gratification if you're a child. It's a skill. And the thing about needle felting and wet felting is that it's so accessible, it's so easy to do. It's simple, it's quick. You can do that, but in order to become proficient at it, you had to persevere. People often bring their friends who aren't necessarily into felt making, and then they go away with a hare or a fox or whatever, and then they're really chuffed, and hopefully I've got another convert. I'm just making like a fox with a book and making a 3D. I'm um, basically taking a small amount of wool and then just uh, needling it with a slightly spiky needle, which kind of entangles all the fibres. Very nice. I like it. It's really great fun. I'm completely hooked. Connecting with. I use a pre-prepared frame like this one here and uh, use a deer skin which I stretch onto it and lace it to a ring, which a ring of steel which goes through the stick like this, and sits in the middle of the drum. While the skin's still wet, I get the people to decorate them with henna. It's like a tattoo, really. You know, it'll stay on there forever. But it's busy here. It's nice. We get a lot of, a lot of uh, attention, and people are always interested in seeing the drums and playing them and talking about drumming. And I explain what the drums are for, which is basically they're a healing drum. If you tune in to the sound of the drum, a repetitive beat, it alters the brain waves, and it provides. It a kind of meditative state where you can have visions. Um, traditionally, the shaman of the village would go into a trance and um, predict the future of the occupants of the village. It's more of a tool of transformation than of a merely a, a musical instrument. With the drums, I make the, the felt head beater with the people that come to do the workshop. And they're always surprised at how long it takes <laughs> to felt a, a ball of wool. I also teach um, Nuno felting, which is when you felt a fleece onto fabric. Um, it's the same technique, hot water and soap and lots of rubbing. And they're always really, really pleased with themselves that they've managed to make something they thought they couldn't make. They've really achieved something. Yeah, we deferred it all, and today we're, I'm scraping all the sinew and the fat off the back of it. But it's lovely actually connecting with... It's been um, quite an enjoyable process. I've joined onto one of Fish's shamanic drum making workshops. I come to the festival and go away having made a drum. It's just a really, really nice thing to do. Doing a little bit more painting with the henna. And then we uh, get out there drumming. Um, people can come, um, and what I say is, I've got a big trunk full of fabric over there, so everything is 100% recycled. They can help themselves to whatever fabric they want, and if they have no idea, I usually say, well, what's your favourite colour? They can either just make a simple flower and attach it to uh, a clip.
clip or a roach pin, or they can add it to an Alice band. At the end of it, they can add uh, a bunch of feathers or some little butterflies, but then baby birds and all sorts of bits and bobs, pom poms, glitter balls. They can just make it as mad as they want, or they can just make a simple flower just to wear on its own. Some people surprise themselves at how creative they are and they actually come up with something really wonderful and that's that's lovely. Yeah, so making a flower for my hair. <laughs> okay, I'm actually going to a wedding this summer where I need to wear a fascinator. So I was like, oh I'd love to make one but I don't know what state this one will be in by the time I get home. It's so. an opportunity for people to actually begin to release the creativity within themselves and not just to observe but to participate. But I teach crafts as a living so I um, do crafts at home all the time. I, I teach it and I write books. Bunting's an idea that we came up with to teach young people to decorate their tents at Glastonbury. First of all, we're inspiring them to be able to be creative. That's number one. I just want to teach people that being creative is really relaxing, really good for your soul. It's the best form of health healing stuff if you ever do. We're teaching them to make bunting, which is very, very simple, but we are teaching them to use these wonderful vintage old machines. We've got a 130 year old machine here. And it's just sort of half an hour out of their Glastonbury festival itinerary and it's, it makes us feel good, it's a feel good factor. We've had wedding parties where the bride and the, the groom come and the best men are here making their bunting for the wedding parties. Number one, we're decorating our tent, so we're taking away two metres of the bunting. And eventually I've got this vision that I'll be able to walk through the tents and find, find the bunting. And each year we use different fabrics, so I'll be able to recognise what year it is. Bunting makes you smile. It's easy, it's for all ages, it's bright, breezy, and it's fun. Yeah, we're making, um, we're gonna make a set of bunting for our friends John and Liam. It's their first Glastonbury, and their first time they come here in their tent. I guess Very fun. Yes. Here at Glastonbury, I'm doing portraits on a bicycle. So they are pedalling the Brompton bike to make electricity and uh, that powers my machine and then I stitch them on the bicycle. I took my sewing machine into life drawing class. I started sketching the naked models in stitch, much to my um, classmates' dismay. So I take it to the laundrette and on the train, and on the bus, um, and uh, stitch and record life, mundane life, but in an exciting way. I'm generally a very strong believer in just working from life. I like to capture the energy from real life. I go abroad and do buskers festivals um, in Europe and I do some art shows as well. I wanted the work to be more interactive. By having someone actually generate the power, I rely on them as much as they need me. We have to work together. It emphasizes the importance of the interaction between us and my artwork. I've been coming since I was about 12. We love coming up here. It's <laughs> Yay! Yay. Uh, we've just had our portrait stitched um, while we powered the sewing machine with a stationary bicycle. And I've had to